All right, let's take a break real quick from the Apple Watch Ultra and cover the new updates that came available for WatchOS 9. So let's go ahead and get started. So this update was rolled out this morning and we got some interesting compass features because now if you actually tap and hold the power button for the SOS tab, there's now a new compass backtrack function where if you simply slide, so in case you go off the grid and you need to backtrack, now you have this compass ability. It's basically like a cartoon. You just retrack your steps. And as soon as you're ready to head back, just simply tap pause. You can actually retrack your steps and the Apple Watch will actually guide you. It actually works really well. I can't wait to test it out even more for future videos. But down here, you can also delete the tracks in case you're done with it and you don't need it. So this new UI interface is the new look for the Compass app. So if we actually tap the home button and also quick note, the complication also has been tweaked a little bit. So if we actually tap here, here you have additional options. So on the top left right here, this will actually give you the little nitty gritty detail on like your altitude, incline, as well as longitude right here. And the arrow pointing north also will still continue to update as you see right here. And if you scroll down, of course, it will give you more information, but I don't want to go ahead and do that due to privacy concerns. But now if you actually use the digital crown and you actually rotate it, you can actually toggle between different looks of the compass as well. So the large one, this one is the one that was primarily featured with the Apple Watch Ultra. Now the backtrack feature is only compatible on selected Apple Watches. And as time makes this video, the compatibility list isn't complete just yet. But right now my device is the Series 7 45 LTE. But I'm pretty sure even the standard GPS version should still be compatible to be used with the new backtrack function. And now in the very bottom corner right here, this icon, actually does give you the freedom to actually label these things. So if you actually go down, I'm going to blur it as a course. You got to select different colors. And if you keep scrolling down, you can actually leave little icons of markers on your trail. And you can actually allow it to show on waypoints or even an outhouse right here. You can select that. And if you look at the little mini map on top here, of course, mine's blurred due to privacy concerns, obviously. But you can actually label them right here, which is quite neat. And will actually save on the storage of the Apple Watch. And you do have the capability to edit the text. So if you would like to name that label, you totally can. And upon research of this video, thanks to Reddit, this will also say automatically save your car park location with the exact coordinates. So no longer do you have to play that guessing game with the GPS pinpointing the location, but can be off by the mark location that the GPS labeled. It's a few parking rows down. This actually will get the exact location. Now, as for the new low power mode, you have quick access to it right here by bringing up your control center, tap the battery life percentage icon, and right here, down here, you'll see a new low power mode. When you when you go ahead and enable this, it'll give you a quick rundown on what it does. So basically it'll turn off always on display. It'll limit some of the internal sensors as well as Wi-Fi and cellular reception. So it'll primarily stay focused on connect, staying connected to your iPhone. And notifications may be delayed by a matter of a few minutes. So it's not constantly refreshing every few seconds. And then down here, I'll also mention that it'll turn off the heart rate sensor in the background, as well as the noise decibel level. So you lose a lot of its safety features as well by doing this, but by doing so, this should allow the Apple Watch to last up to 30 hours under a single charge. You can either turn on right here, or you may select the turn on for, and then it'll just ask you for how many days, three days is the max. And so if we actually go ahead and enable low power mode, by doing so, the control center icon is now yellow. And fun fact, if you actually put it on the charging dock to charge your device, the animation is now yellow. And if you tap on the little lightning bolt icon, the lightning bolt icon also has been fine tweaked just a little bit as the icon looks slightly different than previously. But if you tap on it, it'll actually let you know when it's gonna stop. So if you have battery optimization enabled, it may say it's gonna stop at 80% or so. So now you no longer get that green screen that doesn't do anything. Now, in order to reverse back, you simply just pop back control center. And then there's also a new notification icon, circle icon letting us know that it is indeed on low power mode. And just go ahead and tap on it and disable it just like so and now you're back to normal. Now, if we go back on our iPhone, you can still mirror your device. So if we go into your settings, go into accessibility and look for Apple Watch mirroring. And if you quickly go ahead and enable this, now since we are on the final update for iOS 9, it's extremely responsive. It's still somewhat laggy, but not as bad as it previously was. 
So this operates a lot better than ever before. So my Apple Watch may be the Nike version Apple Watch. Unfortunately, that doesn't matter anymore because an exclusive thing that we previously were receiving, if you also have a Nike version Apple Watch, is you had access to the exclusive Nike watch faces, of course. Well, now that no longer is the case. So it's good news. It's just the Nike edition Apple Watch is less exclusive, feels less exclusive now. So if you actually go into the watch application on our iPhone and you go into watch faces, you'll be able to see the Nike watch faces right here in the face gallery. So you will literally have access to all the watch faces that the Nike version Apple Watch had access to. Unfortunately, it's only the Nike ones, not the other editions. But nonetheless, this is still pretty neat. So you have access to the Nike Compact, which holds a lot of nice complications. You also, as they demonstrated, shows the weather down here. But the Nike Hybrid is still my personal favorite because this actually does give you the most complications for the Nike watch face. And then the Nike logo actually is a quick shortcut that will automatically, when you tap on it, it will automatically launch the Nike Club Run app. But now, aside from having the Nike logo on the backside of the Apple Watch, there's really no other exclusive thing that the Nike version offers aside from the band that it comes equipped with. Now back to our Apple Watch, the Stopwatch app also received a nice tweak as well. As now if you launch the Stopwatch app and you start the timer, you can actually track laps now. Kind of weird that they just added this before because it seems like that's something that should have been standard. There you guys have it. That is basically the new updates and new integrations I got added for WatchOS 9. Let me know in the comment section which one of these was your favorite. And before you click off this video, if you'd like to know the official release for WatchOS 9 as well as iOS 16, it's going to get released in just a couple of days. September 12th of 2022 is when the official release for WatchOS 9 as well as iOS 16 will be released for our electronics. And if you'd like to know how my experience has been like with the, the beta profile, this actually has been the most stable watchOS beta I have ever experienced because if I recall previously with watchOS 8 beta, that thing used to crash constantly all the time. This one, I don't think I only experienced three crash really. So yeah, Apple has been killing it with their betas. They're actually somehow stable now. Aside from that, make sure you also turn on notifications and are subscribed because I'm going to go ahead and test watchOS 8 against watchOS 9 and see how much of a battery life improvement we receive between these two massive firmware updates. So make sure you are subscribed. Now, if you'd like to watch more, check out this video over here as I compare the battery life between every single Apple Watch release against one another. The end results are shocking. And then that video over there, that is a video YouTube's recommending specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.